Time for more Warcraft 3. We're playing the Cult of the Damned. As you can see, we've moved north onto the outskirts of Anderhal. We're in search for the evil cultists, and we're looking for why the grain was plagued to begin with. Look, it's those cultists who are with the Necromancer. What are they doing to that mine? Let's not wait to find out. Attack! Damn these intruders. They must not interfere with the Master's plan. Let's build a base camp here. With those cultists creeping around, I'd rather not head in there without backup. I couldn't agree more. So... The Acolytes, they are the equivalent of the peasants for those people. And as you can see, they're just about as strong as them. However, they don't have the mighty power of pickaxes like our peasants have. So while our base gets built up, I want to point out something. What's with Jaina's face? I've wondered this for forever, basically. Like, it, does she just have a weird tan? Is that like magic? In, and, or something, or is that just a shadow that's over her, the top half of her face and the bottom half is all super pale? I mean, it's just something I've never understood. I mean, granted, she suffers from a pretty serious case of, um, fantasy armor, considering she has none, but, hey, at least she, at least she looks good while doing it. Anyway, this is a part of the game that's showing off the fact that peasants can work on the same... Oh, what's this? Ah, yes. The peasants can work on buildings collaboratively, and then they build them up a lot faster than if they were just being built by one at a time. And this is also one of the first games where we start... Oh, here we go. Gonna be doing some fighting. I don't have anything controlled or grouped up, so I can't really do a whole lot. We'll have this guy focus on the necromancers back there. Oh, okay. Well... That was a shame. Oh well, I can I can handle losing one guy. We are our priests get hit. Uh, we can also summon water elementals and we just get a good grip of how people are doing. Footman is hurt. Also, the mortar team does not appear to be doing a whole lot of damage to the necromancers as I hope. I think. If I remember correctly, no. Mortar Team, yeah, they deal Siege damage, but Siege damage was, is strong against unarmored opponents, He's and they have fun. Light, just like the Priests, so Light is pretty good against the Siege damage as well. It's a shame, I thought for a second that they were unarmored, because they were Spellcasters, but I guess I was wrong. Anyway. This is the first mission of the game where we have to build up from complete scratch, where we didn't even get a town hall to start things off with. So, it kind of just shows you that it takes a very long time to build up a town completely from scratch. And that will also come in handy once we set up something called an expansion over here at this gold mine, where we get double the gold income coming in at any given point. And to get to there, we have to go in this direction. But for now, what I'm going to be doing is building up our defenses. So first things first, we'll put up a tower over here by the trees. And we will also be putting up a line of farms like we had been doing previously. Since we are running low on food up here, we are using 17 out of 18. We need to be getting those farms up ASAP. Luckily, I don't have a whole lot of farms I need to build. But another thing I need to keep in mind is that I also will be running out of lumber fairly soon. So what I'm going to do is prioritize cutting down these trees over here first so that we don't cut out our natural tree defense that we have. Yes, we already need more farms being built. Luckily, you know, doing this farm wall strategy is very convenient because we can use buildings that we were going to have Whoa, and they were going to eventually clutter our relatively cramped spaces. Instead, we can use them as walls. 
So that's a strategy that's really, really old as well. I remember doing that in Warcraft 2 and stuff back in the day. In fact, it was very interesting what the strategies were in Warcraft 2 with regards to towers and farms because they played out a little bit differently than what you would expect. See, oh, oh, oh here we are. And we don't have the lumber belt to upgrade anybody yet. Alright, so we're gonna have Jaina summon that guy to kill our priest who is getting right away. wailed upon. I am your servant. And by moving everybody, we move them out of Jaina's ability to blizzard. So that didn't go nearly as well as I had hoped. Our priest is getting hurt again. Run him. And yeah, I need to be working on getting some control groups going so that I can... Ah! This ghoul is cannibalizing that corpse. As you can see, his health is uh, increasing periodically. We're going to cast Holy Light on him, which is a nuking spell against the undead. I just remembered that I can do that. So, that will be very useful in a lot of contexts. I can use the... I can use that against ghouls. I don't think I can use that against necromancers, because they're not technically undead. They're just weird. Right, so, Warcraft 2 strategies. What we do do... What you had to do was you had to rush a tower almost as soon as possible. And then, once you had the tower going, you would build other things. Because rushing the tower was really the only way to stop somebody from pretty much annihilating you really, really quickly out of the gate. With rushing grunts, or, or footmen, or... Well, those were really the only two things you could rush back in the day. Because we only had two races. And now that's been expanded to quite a great deal more. So I think that now might be time to do another little bit of fast forwarding. Because there's not really a whole lot going on in this segment. And really it just is all about building up our defenses, building up our base, getting upgrades rolling in. Alright, see you on the other side of the fast forward. Alright, let's check in a little bit. I don't think I've built anything that you haven't seen yet. I had to build up an Altar of Kings, which is something I don't think I've talked about very much before. The Altar of Kings appeared in the level where Uther was running back and forth, Black Rock and Roll. But I didn't really mention it. What it does is, let's say Arthas or Jaina dies, we can resurrect them here at the Altar of Kings for a nominal fee of gold. And it takes a very, very long time to resurrect them, if they do indeed die. But this is kind of different from Justice the old school games, the where if a hero character Whoa. died in the campaign, they were dead. And you would lose. Whoa, this was kind of very new, something that they brought out just for this game, because the combat became a lot more hero-based. And, of course, in multiplayer, if you want to use heroes, you can't just have them die. That would be kind of really boring because it'd be the first person who loses their hero basically loses the game so this is kind of their way of balancing it out it's not the end of the world if you lose a hero but it's kind of a big deal it really slows you down and you don't have you're at a major disadvantage compared to your opponents i have upgraded the town hall to a keep and that unlocks the second tier of buildings which is pretty cool there's also a third tier that we will get to much, much later in the game. But when we have a keep, we can go ahead and build an Arcane Sanctum. The Arcane Sanctum is the, is the building which allows us to construct... That is a lot of necromancers. It's what allows us to construct the, the priests that we see. And we're going to need a couple of them if we want to stand any significant chance against the undead. Because... They will just form the backbone of keeping us alive. As you can see, they somehow have the ability in this mission to severely outproduce us. Certainly. And we also got to see that the necromancers have the ability to raise people from the dead. Unsurprisingly. Let's go ahead and put these shooty guys, the riflemen, on a control group. Okay, so I have six control groups right now. <laughs> Always fun stuff. The other building that we can build is the workshop, which is, allowed, is, is the building which creates the 
mortar teams. It also has a couple other people that we will eventually see. Mostly siege based guys as well as upgrades for those units. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and train up the priests. What we can do also is do priest adept training which will give them more mana and also unlocks new spells for them. This is in contrast to the footmen and the riflemen where you have blacksmiths, which is a dedicated building to upgrade them. Instead, on the higher tier buildings, the upgrades are just kind of built right in and you don't make a separate building for them. All right, we're gonna throw this other priest up with our army, which is useful because I mean, one priest He's sucks. He's their they yes, they run out of mana really, really quickly, and they can't heal more than one person at a time. So I like to get a pretty decent number of them, not too many, but uh, a decent amount. Oh, long rifles are cool. They allow the I riflemen to shoot from a very, land. very big distance. I am your servant. You. And that. Is my aid required? It requires the workshop to be built, which is over here. I'm so here you can start to see that the advanced buildings begin to do a lot of cross work with each other. And That's curious. this is a whole lot more advanced than what it was before. Jaina, I'm going to upgrade her water elementals to max. And now she makes two of them. I come no, she continues way. to make one of them. Some of the summons allow you to make uh, two water elementals, or two, two summons instead of one. But I guess in the case of the water elementals, that's not the case. Hello. So one thing that's really important that I need to make sh utilize is the fact that the mortar teams, when they hit the uh, when they hit the corpses of the enemies, sorry, when mortar teams kill an enemy, they don't leave a corpse, which means the necromancers have nothing with which to raise skeletons. And as you can see, having the priest is already making a humongous difference. My army was barely injured there, though my farm is a little bit on fiery and the scout tower never got finished. Let's move this peasant over here and then also shift control and command to get him to repair that farm. So now that we have mortar teams, we'll train up a handful of them. They're not going to be too useful on this mission because I don't think this mission is particularly base fighting, but I think we have enough people to go ahead and at least start this little side quest here. Oh, I guess it's not quite a side quest, but we're going to be exploring Anderhal eventually. But I think that with the current array of towers that we have, we should be able to hold off any sort of aggression without leaving behind any defenses, defense units whatsoever. I'm here to help. We're gonna try to undo this massive traffic jam we got going on here. I did not move my people particularly intelligently. Yes, the uh, the mortar team announces mortar combat when you make them, <laughs> which is an allusion to a video game that can't. I'm just kidding. That's a little too presumptuous of my audience. I think that you're a particularly intelligent group. And it would, I would never insult you in such a capacity, intentionally. So I don't quite know what to expect of the ramps up here, what's going to be on top of them. I assume that we're going to be facing some... Ah, Murlocs. Here we are. That wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but there they are all the same. So we will kill the Murlocs. I'm going to go ahead and check out this defenses. I'm going to go ahead and put down two more towers just because I'm a little bit paranoid about leaving the, bent, the base so defenseless. Of course. Let's move up Arthas under the Certainly. cliffs. See what we can find. There doesn't appear to be a whole lot of anything. Of course. So we'll move. Start moving our, our units again. We got here trolls now. Yes, my friend. Is someone injured? And I assume that's just another relatively generic creep camp. So we will deal with them accordingly. And we have claws of attack here, 
which just gives you plus six attack. I'm going to go ahead and put him on Jaina because Arthas is... Inventory is getting a little bit full. For honor. And now we're going to certainly pop over in right away. this direction. Upgrade the two scout towers while we're over here. Yes, Lord. Our forces are and under then attack. deal with whatever we're currently fighting, which appears to be gnolls. Or I can help. Here's not. Here's my aid I they got scared. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Is he kind of got a little bit enthusiastic about fighting those gnolls. But it didn't seem to do him very much good. Well, I mean, it didn't seem to do the gnolls very much good to try and fight my awesome army of death. I did notice that the gnolls have levels associated with them. They're not heroes, obviously, but the creeps in this game also have levels associated with them. Which stand determines the their strength, and you certain. can kind of uh, base if you can if you're ready to kill a certain camp of creeps based collapsed. off of their level difference our between yours. Ah, now we need to see how our defenses are doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and check in to see if they are withstanding the assault. They appear to be getting their asses handed to them. That's a shame. That, I don't even think my peasant will get over there and repair this building. Okay, it's pretty tight. Let's get two people repairing it if we can. No, no, repair it, repair it, repair it. What are you doing? Dumbasses. Dumbasses. Well, that sucks. At least I know... They keep making the skeletons and the peasants run away. I think I might actually have to rely on some sort of defensive forces here. I can't really do anything. Wait, yes I can. Hold arms! Yeah, I've forgotten about this. It turns your peasants into militiamen. And it lasts for a short period of time. Makes them considerably tougher. So as you can see, the necromancers are really dangerous. They uh, pretty much did a real number on my base defenses here. Didn't really do nearly as well as I had hoped. And now all of my peasants are kind of screwed up. While we're here, research an upgrade or two. And the death of that peasant actually kind of did a little bit of a favor to me. I forgot I had a mortar team being built. So, a big thing that happened there was I just happened to have a gap here that the ghouls were able to creep past and hit my, hit my towers through. And also the peasants kept on trying to chop down trees instead of doing work. Annoying, but not the end of the world. Righto. Right. Merchant. Hello. Merchant is just a neutral little shop. We can buy scroll around. protection, potion of mana, wand of negation. Job wand done. of negation is a really good item a if you have the uh, you brains to, to balance uh, all the items what and the units done. and stuff and have What's the plan? Uh, a brain cell left over to actually sure. use it. I'm right. not that good. So, Fire! we're probably not gonna. I'm just gonna skip it. Any sort of active items, I'm just not. You know, in the. I'm just not able to balance that many things in my head. While also telling you all about my, my day and. You know, my laundry habits or whatever I end up having to talk about to fill up time. Those were just a usual set of golems. We'll. Let Jaina. Jaina's not going to need the Ring of Protection because she's not going to get hit very often. A sound plan. Because hitting a woman is never okay. And what ails? we will just put it on Arthas instead because he's a lot more tanky. I don't remember how to get to the gold mine, but I assume walking towards it would probably make more sense than walking away from it, which I'm currently doing. Is there danger? I can help. Arthas and Jaina lead up. Let's let them lead the charge. Move the footmen over here. Siege. How is this group doing against the ghouls? Probably. Oh, I have another gap. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay. And I also am not able to repair that one without sending the, pe the peasants directly into the line of fire. So, obviously, my wall strategy 
is leaving a little bit to be desired. Or a lot bit. Mostly a lot bit. I'm gonna go with a lot bit. Because I'm gonna lose yet another tower, I think. Hopefully these skeletons will... Yep, that, that tower is basically gone. Oh well. That's not the end of the world. Unless I get particularly lucky, I don't think we're going to... See... Wait. We might actually pull this off. Okay, great. Let me... First things first, let's get this Mortarman over here to do something kind of useful for us. We're gonna have him attack ground next to these trees because I need this tree to be gone so that I can actually get behind here and heal this tower in the middle of the fight. I Where's don't... Your wife? It's take, uh, yeah, it's chopping down a few of the trees. It's not the most useful skill to be able to shoot down your own trees, Hello. but it comes up occasionally, we'll do it. and here's one of those instances where it's mostly oh, wow. just to get me dug out of a hole that I've put yes, myself you know. into. There we are. Well, easy. So what I'm going to do is queue up a oh, farm go, there. Then. Oops. Yes, me no. oh, the farm go, and queue up repairing. Yes, and Where we don't need this guy to attack ground anymore. We can go ahead yes, and group Show him up with the original Hello. mortar team group. Where do you want us? And okay, so the expansion is just secured. I don't know about this it's little gappy up here. We're gonna go ahead and explore is that. Danger? Make sure there's not anything that A will sound plan. prove to be Certainly. problematic. And as you can see, indeed there is not. Job's done. We're gonna Go pop over. now over in this direction and get a good sense of what the rest of the map looks like. I see burnt out towers, so I assume that there's probably a burnt out yes, bridge or something. You know, something it looks more like an environment detail gosh. than anything that's gonna have any gameplay us? significance. Yeah. So let's just break this crate, see if there's anything in there. There is not. And continue our rampage need. through what do you need? Uh, the let's get woods of nature. Our are under attack. I see another tower over there, though. So it looks like across the bridge is potentially a good thing. Maybe a friendly town. Maybe neutral people and my priests for some reason were lagging way behind my other units so they weren't Certainly. even involved in this fight i must have not given them Justice the move command which is right. prone to happen God. you know because i didn't pay Whoa, as much word. attention as i needed to let's go ahead and get another tower being built up I think that now that we've patched up the holes, hopefully we're going to see the last of the whole... Oh, we lost our, lost the guy. Hopefully we're going to see the last of the whole people sneaking by, behind our towers and destroying them, which is just what happened right there. But hopefully that's not going to happen anymore now that we've got that, um, you know, taken care of. So it looks like, in general, it's going a lot better. I'm still... I mean, who am I kidding? I'm still going to lose that tower. But I feel better about it than I did before. It appears that during this fight, all of my units were poisoned. That's okay. What's the plan? Jaina can take another potion of mana. And... Is someone injured? Ah, yes. So when I researched the adepts, the, the priest adept, I got Dispel Magic, which is basically not a... Yes, me lord. It, it's a... Not a debuff, I forget what it, what those yes, things are actually called, where you remove negative oh. effects. It's not right. healing, it's... well, whatever. I'm here to Clearly help. I don't play I enough do nerdy I games, what which is any game, really. Alright, so I think that I've cleared out this whole side of the map. Uh, it looks explored, Justice so the there's not too need? much that could be said. Where do you want I think that now I'm ready to start an assault on the on the, the enemy base, which is good Shut because I'm sick of them kicking my yes, ass. It's probably something Let's I should have done point. at the start, but oh well. Instead, I decided to Don't buffoon done. around and go for an expansion, which I don't even think what I'm ever going to need. 
but we will go ahead and seize it just Hello. for the fun of it. We will Not creep dead. up our mortar teams. This will probably lure some base defenders out to... Yep, there they are. But we can go ahead and use this situation to our advantage. Run out this group. Use our riflemen to attack. Who's getting hurt? That guy. And he's probably gonna die. Yep, we can't push him. Put him on defend because why not? I don't think they're really getting hit by any major attacks from ranged units. But it will be helpful all the same. I'm gonna go ahead and use the blizzard on the necromancers to bring the pain a little bit. We lost the footmen. And. Okay, good. We are. Pretty much, yeah, we've killed all the necromancers, and we don't have a whole lot more to worry about. We lost a great number of footmen there because I can't really keep track of them at the same time as I'm doing everything else. Let's get to But that's okay. They they knew what they were getting themselves into. So I'm being a little bit trepidatious about fighting. I don't know if trepidatious is the word. I'm being a little bit careful about fighting the the undead base for a pretty good reason. Undead are really good at defense because they, well, I think that pretty much any side in this game is good at defense, but I think that the undead are particularly annoying about it because they get defensive structures as well as buildings which work with their units to amplify their own abilities. Meaning, see this graveyard? Graveyard is full of skeletons. Skeletons plus necromancers equals sadness. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try to avoid getting into a direct fight with them if I can, and instead just kind of do this little mortar team creeping up business. Also, it's worth noting that the Acolyte is repairing that building. So I should be targeting the Acolyte first, just like that. And that should make this assault go much, much smoother. Although, to be fair, once I killed the main base defenses, there really wasn't a whole lot of trouble to deal with. Uh-oh. Yeah, that, that guy is within the range of that defensive structure. And they pulled out another Acolyte. So you know what? I'm focusing on the wrong things here. Let's go ahead and use the mortar teams to kill the... Come on, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Be smart. Let's use the mortar teams to go ahead and kill the defensive structures so I can send in my army instead. Come on, guys. Jeez. I just want the mortar teams to move. I just want... What are you doing, guys? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What? I, I swear, I don't know what is going on anymore. Wow, I must seem like a humongous noob at the moment. And you would be not unjust in making such an assessment, but it still hurts my feelings. What is going on? Just, just fire at the thing. Okay, good. So, as you can see, the mortar teams can outrange the towers. This is kind of true of the siege units of any any of the races in this game. And pretty much what I'm going to be doing a lot of in the single player campaign is this whole creeping forward slowly, letting my units draw. Uh, pull back, guys. Is there danger? I think you need to have a target somewhere. Where do you want it? Okay. And now that I sort of am getting this uh, under control here, I'm doing a little bit better about making sure that the mortar team is actually firing on the structures, and I think I've actually lost a priest as well. No, I, I have all the priests. So the siege damage is just wrecking these buildings. You can see that it does a significant amount of damage to the graveyard. And in a handful of volleys, I can bring down any sort of defensive structures or otherwise that the AI is using. This 
the the acolytes appear to be summoning new buildings to try and replace the ones that I have killed, which you know is smart, but annoying. What do you need? So the undead, instead of building units like what uh, the human race has to do, we they can just summon them where they appear and they automatically construct themselves. This has the advantage of freeing up the acolytes so that they only have to, you only need one building at a time. But the downside is that they can't collaboratively build them up any faster like the human race is able to. So we, yeah, the, uh, the mortar teams also overshoot units a lot if they're on the move. And the AI is doing a fairly interesting job of putting the base, or putting their their base buildings down. They are not putting them in any intelligent manner. They just appear to be throwing them down wherever they feel like. So this is a great guard. Let's make sure that we kill that, so any necromancers can't continue to necromance. You know, a book is really interesting. I don't know why this popped in my mind, but I thought of the word necromancer, and it made me remember the book Euromancer, which is a very, very... I mean, I don't want to be too negative of a person, but it really wasn't my favorite book. And if you don't know, that was the book that The Matrix was kind of inspired by, or rather, pretty much a lot of cyberpunk fiction. Anything which has, like, a data space that people jack into or, you know enter and, and do their hackerins we'll do it was adventure. pretty much started by that book I stand for the and come on guys Certainly. come on guys don't pull into the defensive do pull don't pull into their defenses Just don't pull into their defenses the we will hit them from afar and we will lose units and that's okay we're come on i swear they are just way too eager to fight okay they are so eager, I swear to God, I can't even, I cannot even deal with this right now. But that's the Halls of the Dead, which is the town hall building of the undead. And if I can kill that, hopefully my life will become a lot easier. As you can see, the town hall of them, of, of, of the undead side, is able to be a defensive building as well and it shoots a particularly damaging beam of super undead mega death and i don't like dealing with that in fact the spirit towers are also extremely powerful in my opinion the guard towers deal 27 damage the spirit towers deal that as a minimum and they're dead you know they also have a Pretty decent range Hello. and rate of this fire. So this is a crypt. The crypt is sure, worth killing target. because it makes it's the it's the equivalent of the barracks. I moved these guys over here. Oh. I never made anything. It's not going to be relevant at all now. But I'm not oh, one to right. half start something except yes, for Lord. you know Bastion and Half Life it? Two and other such series and Dust. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All that stuff this is stuff I really definitely want to get back to. But, you know, why not take the opportunity to poke a little bit of fun at myself? So we've killed all the Acolytes. We've killed everything that's of any sort of real danger now. So let's move in the full, full armed forces and speed up this little base, or base siege, which... Normally, the base sieges go much, much better than this one. For some reason, I was just not doing a particularly good job here. But I think I remember this from the uh, first time I played through this game as well. Is just this message, this this mission was just kind of a pain. I don't exactly know why. It might just be that the AI bonuses are a little on the generous side, like. They get a lot more extra gold, or they just spawn units faster. I don't know, but I'm not a big fan of it. Oh, all the is my aid required? Hello again, children. 
I am Kel'Thuzad, and I've come to deliver a warning. Leave Wellingov alone. Your curiosity will be the death of you. Are you responsible for this plague, Necromancer? Is this cult your doing? Yes. I ordered the Cult of the Damned to distribute the plagued grain. But the sole credit is not mine. What do you mean? I serve the Dreadlord, Malganus. He commands the scourge that will cleanse this land and establish a paradise of eternal darkness. And what exactly is this scourge meant to cleanse? Why, the living, of course. His plan is already in motion. Seek him out at Stratholme if you need further proof. Is there danger? So, infected granaries. You know, I've always thought that that little melody that plays during the super emotional and and uh, intense cutscenes in this game reminded me entirely of the Godfather theme. You know, like. Uh, da, 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 well, the that was. Are empty. <laughs> the shipments have already been sent out. Or too late. I started singing um, Fiddler on the Roof, but, you know, I, I attempted it. <laughs> um, yeah, like. Or whatever. Is totally just the, the, the theme from. Oh, hi, Timmy. Timmy is a neutral ghoul. If you remember, we saved a Timmy. I don't know if that was the same Timmy, but if, if whatever the case may be, that Timmy has been ghoulified, and he's probably not doing too well. I can help. I mean, he might be enjoying his new life as a ghoul. I don't know. Let's move north and pretty much put an end to this mission. Oh, hello, merchant. What's what seems to be for sale up in here? Nothing of any utility. Of course. Let me go ahead and do some light exploring with Arthur. Okay. A sound plan. So you know I was saying earlier that you can use the I'm here to mortar help. teams to for blow honor. up trees? I'm what do you need? Here. I was somewhat of wrong course. in saying that that's someone not very useful Hello. because in the single player Deep campaign time. especially, yeah. you're going to see a lot of secrets hidden between the trees that require you to break them my strength to to get to a sound plan all right more creep or obviously means more yeah, undead shenanigans so we'll see what of the course. undead are up to i can help what do you need Aye, sir. is someone ah, injured? the abominations uh that's a lot of abominations i stand <laughs> and we just a drew aggro on them <laughs> okay jaina Throw down a blizzard, summon water elementals. I should have done that in the opposite of order of the way I just did it. Right away. And I don't have nearly enough footmen to really handle this fight as well as I could be. But I suppose it's actually not going nearly as bad. The abominations are strong, but they're no match for Arthas' ability to wholly light them. Also, I think that my priests are able to outpace their yes, ability to do damage. What Let's, get Let's move our mortar team up because they us. did not participate in that fight. This battle is a and help. that Whoa. is the... Oh, I must have hit the is peasant hockey. The that I is the yes, slaughterhouse, sir. which is used to Hello. make the abominations in the, that we're fighting in the first place. <laughs> also, the AI Let's appears to be smart enough to target the mortar teams. But they don't deal very much damage, apparently. They're definitely supposed to look a lot more menacing than they actually are, I guess. Alright. Kel'Thuzad. Certainly. Naive fool. My death will make little difference in the long run. For now, the scourging of this land begins. I didn't even do anything to him. I just walked up to him and he died on his own accord. Necromancers, am I right? Anyway, 
So Anderhal, in case you didn't... Ugh, 43 minutes, wow. Sorry, guys. And gals. Anyway. The... The granary of basically the entire human race depends on... Let me, let me rephrase that. Anderhal is basically the big wheat distributor of the human race in this game, and if that's plagued, then we're in some serious trouble. So, kind of a rough around the corners mission. I might drop the difficulty to easy just to get through the game a little bit faster. And I hope that you don't judge me, because I will certainly be judging myself. Anyway, thank you all for watching.